Here we are in London and I'm with the Toronto Troubadour, the man with a vision, or the man with third vision. <laughs> Set. it's lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. And there's a couple of really good things that are going on in your life and in the in the band's life we want to talk about. Yeah. Most importantly, dear John, there is an event that you're curating mm -hmm. that's going to take place at the Hard Rock Hotel, yep. uh, the new one that's searches by Marble Arch in London, on the 9th of October. So we'd love to hear how that came together, celebrating the 75th anniversary of, of John's birth, 75th birthday. 79th, actually. Yeah, um, it's, it's something that I've wanted to do ever since I wrote Dear John. Um, originally wrote it with my brother, who was a founding member of the group, no longer with us. But um, not that he's dead, he's just no longer with the group. <laughs> Um, and ever since then, about four years ago when it came out on the debut album, I've always wanted to put together a show that brings together some of my peers um, from my generation, from generations past, and, and sort of bring everybody together to celebrate John around this idea that we're celebrating not only his birthday but his legacy for peace and what he stood for and everything that he did to inspire us many, many decades on from, from his passing and from his birth. And it finally happened. And it actually comes almost 10 years after the, the seminal event which set into motion mm. the, the, the formation of the band yeah. and that first song that, that came about. So t tell us about that, the, the moment that you, you're on TV, it was on TV, it was in the news, you're over in t Toronto where you've moved, yeah. and you saw the events unfolding um, in Iran. It's so difficult to um, put that back into focus of what was happening at that time because it was the first time the world was witnessing revolution and it was happening right before us through social media. It really was the catalyst to everything that came afterwards from the Arab world and the Arab uprisings. But for my brother and I, it was so, it hit so close to home, obviously, because I'm Persian. Um, and there was only one thought process, was how do we help? How do we make sure that the, the youth and what they're doing, their message stays in the forefront of the media so that it's not forgotten? And the only way we knew best is music. And the best way we knew was through Pink Floyd, because it was the biggest group in Iran. Always was, you know? Um, and, and it just happened with a spark at a show. I thought instead of singing, hey, teacher, and as we were covering it, uh, I said, hey, Ayatollah, leave those kids alone. And the crowd went crazy. <laughs> and that was it. We knew. And I turned to Soul and I said, we have to do a remake of this because this could be the thing that keeps their voice alive as they're fighting against this vicious regime of the Ayatollahs. And it worked. <laughs> it was an unbelievable moment. Because you've moved, you and your family have moved and, and emigrated from Iran into into Canada or to Canada you know, quite a few years before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I, I was born into war and witnessed it all. And I remember, you know, the stories that were told to me by my sister and my family of the horrific things that were unfolding. And we were lucky enough to escape out of it. Um, but when we did land in, in Canada after long trek through that side of the world, um, music was always the leading forefront for me, um, and very much so from, for, for soul as well. Um, and it drove us forward, and that's why it sort of took over everything in my life. And there was, there was a process through which the, 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 the vision, the blurred vision came together, and your debut album, uh, I mean, the, the, the lyrics are very... Uh, uh, precise and pointed, no, no more war, organized insanity. Yeah. I mean, was it like four years or a lifetime's worth of uh, concern and anger you know, with, with the state of the world, the state of your home country? Absolutely. I mean, I don't think we could have done ourselves justice by simply writing cheesy poppy love songs <laughs> because we weren't in that frame of mind. I've never been in that frame of mind. Um, so at that time, it was our debut album, and we wanted to make a, a, a grand statement to encompass all of these years of things that have sort of unfolded in our lives and gone into our minds and our hearts. We wanted to somehow portray that through our first piece of 
originally written music that, that would come out. And I think we, we achieved that. We, we got our point across in a very direct way. Um, and I hope that it remains something that remains poignant to the world um, up until the point that we do have peace. And then we won't need to sing songs like No More War anymore. And so the, the Dear John event, given uh, Lennon's uh, whole ethos and, and, and the way that he evolved, particularly after he left the Beatles, a very much a, a peace-driven message. Yeah. Um, is that kind of the, the, the fundamental key of, of, the, of the event, the promoting that message of peace? First and foremost, it's, it's Lenin, it's his music, how it unifies us around the world and brings us together, and it always has, and the impact that he left. But absolutely, the, the, the message of peace is fundamental to who he was and what inspired me to become who I am, which is why uh, I felt it so strongly, I felt so strongly about involving War Child in this, because I could have been the face of War Child. And now as an adult and, and, and in the music world, it's my chance to give something back and, and shine a spotlight on, on this little, on this big charity in, a, in my own little way, whatever way I can help. It's, it's very so, so tell us, tell us more about how, how you envisage the, the day or the, the, the event going. Uh, well, it's going to be my peers together in a room, in an incredible room surrounded by memorabilia of, of our heroes um, in this wonderful venue that's just opened up and, and launched in London. Um, the Hard Rock has played a role in my life for, for many years. It was the first place that I ever performed in Toronto and subsequently it was the... That's the, about five years ago, was it? Yeah, five years ago. <laughs> um, it, was, it was, oddly enough, early, much earlier than that. Um, I was just starting out and Toronto had the first Hard Rock internationally. So after the one that opened in Park Lane, the Toronto location was the first one outside of UK. Um, and so that it's played a big role in my life and then we played of course the Times Square Hard Rock for the Imagine No Hunger campaign and for Why Hunger, another charity I'm an ambassador of. Um, and yeah, on the night we're going to bring together a great number of people and fans and peers of mine that uh, are there all together to celebrate John his birthday, his message, his music, and also to raise as much as we can for this incredible charity, War Child. Um, and we are, you know, it's a free show, so everybody is welcome, and what we're doing is encouraging everyone to donate online. They just go to our website, all the links are there, um, and donate at the show while they're there. So whether they can make it or not, they can help us in this in this effort, one way or another. No, I think now more than ever, it's a, it's a it's a great message, it's a, a great initiative, and it, it, it looks, it sounds like it's going to be a great event as well. Mm. In terms of, of the band Blurred Vision, um, it's now five years since the, the first album, and for a few years now since you, you've been back in London as your base, um, there's been the prospect of, of a second album, which mm. you, you tentatively originally titled Redemption. Yeah. Can you tell us where you are with that album, and will, will we see it soon? Um, it's done. And it's in a vault, just ready to pounce. <laughs> I feel the same excitement for this album as I, if not more so than I did for the uh, debut album because it's the debut was looking outwards to the world. Mm -hmm. This one is very much looking inwards of the trials and tribulations that we face in life and how we get through them, and a very personal sort of. Uh, ethos and and philosophy to this record and I can't wait to get it out because it's a totally different sound it's a totally different energy um, it's tons of synthesizers and sort of lots of I've been immersed in the world of 80s in the last little while and so much of the music that came out of then was so inspiring and uplifting and, and it's played a big role to create this sort of new contemporary sound for us I love it and what, one of the songs that you, you've played over the last few years is Magdalena, and that's been through quite a transformation since I first heard it, oh God, actually yeah. here, downstairs at the yeah. Troubadour, when you first aired it here as, yeah. as, as, a, as a new song, to the, uh, to the version that was, um, I think came out with a, with, a, with a video maybe a year ago. This, this year, actually, in yeah. May, just a few months ago, actually. It, so is, is that, does it, and, and that, 
the transformation has become a lot. You say there's a lot more electronica on it. Yeah. Is that is that a good guide for people who maybe haven't heard you before? It is. Yeah, it is. Um, this this <coughs> this album has a lot of that. The, the the rhythm is a strong element of this record, and um, the the melodies and how it's all sort of put together and brilliantly produced by Terry again, who's with us on this last record. And that's the um, the slightly well known engineer producer Terry Brown yeah you know he's, he's done a few things in the past <laughs> it always boggles my mind when I'm in the studio with him or when we're together that you know this man I, I get to be fortunate enough to have him in my life it's it's spectacular and he's such a, a wise and humble individual constantly inspires you to do the best there's nothing else that he accepts so and uh to be fair as well, because you know, he's well known for the work he did with Rush, but um, that the the work he's done with you is certainly very modern sounding. Mm. It's not as if this is a like a, a throwback prog sound. So how would you describe the blurred vision of 2019 going into 2020? Um, it's genre defined, I think. It's contemporary, um, <laughs> philosophical. It's, I guess, music that makes you think. That, moves you, um, makes your mind think, makes your heart feel, makes your hips move, <laughs> philosophically. Um, on a more direct musical level, it's it's very much an influence of the likes of David Bowie meets Depeche Mode's Violator on a foundation of the great nostalgic eras of, of rock and roll. Um, so yeah, we're trying to create something different, push the boundaries, why not? That's the whole point of it. And the, the live band. So originally you were Toronto based when Blur Vision first came into being. And then you relocated over to London yeah. and um, your brother stayed behind. Mm. And you now have um, uh, a set of musicians uh, that are London based. So tell us about the band you're playing with right now. Um, yeah, I, it's, they're amazing. Phenomenal London lads. We're all a sort of millennial group now, which is which is amazing, and, and we really bond and connect. Um, Jake Bradford Sharp on drums, Jakey Boy Libretto on guitars, and uh, Bentley Levy on bass. Um, and it's it's fantastic. I mean, we spent months and months rehearsing together, um, where now the music is in our DNA, and I love that because we might not see each other for a month and then we head back into the studio and it's like we just played 60 shows because it's so entrenched in us now for, for the amount of work that we put into it and it's an it's a exciting phenomenal group you know I can't so, wait so, you, to so you have a, a two guitar lineup so yeah. um, to cover the synth parts do you, do you have one of the guys that does the synth slides no uh, we, we do we have tracks that play the synths because um, we use the sounds that we did on the record and to replicate that live uh, takes a lot of synthesizers. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we, we maintained that and we kept the, the, the tracks there, but what you hear off the stage is, is everything else is, is coming at you live and right there and then. The energy is bouncing off there and I'm proud of that, yeah. And it's a big show, it's a big production show. I mean, we're, we're not just a you know, plug in, turn up to 11 and play these big riffs and scream our heads off. This is very well thought out, you know, methodically thought out parts. Um, and it's filled with sound effects and explosions. And it's a stadium show that you play, whether it's in a 100 capacity room or a 5,000 capacity room. It's always a big, big night. And of course for you, it's not, <clears throat> it's not wishful thinking because you paid download this year. Mm. Yeah. So how was that? Phenomenal. I mean, it was so strange because all around me I'm hearing music that personally I didn't grow up with, um, but unbelievable bands, phenomenal atmosphere and phenomenal crowds. I mean, it was my first experience there and it was, I was, you know, overtaken by emotion because once, once we finished the set at the beginning, it was a packed house. I mean, the dog, dog tooth tent area was packed out of pe mostly people that had no idea who we were. And by the end of the show, it was the roar that came back to us that, yeah, this is, this is we accept you here at Download. It was a phenomenal feeling. I loved it. So did the band. And we couldn't have timed this better because there was a fantastic announcement yesterday that you all will be playing as part of the lineup at the Prog Stage at Rambling Man 2020. 
very you excited. Must be stoked about oh that. my God! It's uh, you know we we were there in 2016. It was unbelievable, and now we get to go back with this new band and new music. Um, a whole new energy and see what the reaction is going to be from the crowd and it's it's funny I mean that's I, I'm so proud of that element that the breadth of music is so varied that we can play tea in the park or download or Prague in the park at Ramblin Man or Glastonbury and be able to craft our set to each show and pull it off that it's not just a one trick pony kind of band we have a lot to sing about and play. <laughs> and so between now and then, um, are, are there any other, other dates you'd be playing that we should know about? Yeah, well obviously the Lennon show is a huge undertaking and has taken up much of my life for the past three months of bringing together all of these artists and special guests and curating the show and the set and everything. Um, so that's going to be fantastic on the 9th of October. Uh, then we're actually doing a show at the Islington a small little warm-up, you know, intimate thing on the 8th of November. Um, we've never played there and it's a, it's a fun club and we were invited so we thought, yeah, why not? It's going to be a short, fun set. And then after that we're doing a wonderful event called Cancer on the Rocks at Bush Hall. Um, we'll be playing the Saturday night of that show. Um, and then essentially preparing for what's to come in 2020 um, and everything ahead. So by that I, I read that the album is looking like between the, uh, the Dear John events and um, and uh, those other shows? Uh, the album won't be released then, no. No, no, no. <laughs> it's going to take some time. Um, but I do see it starting to unravel and more and more singles and the major announcement of the album coming um, hopefully by the summer of 2020. Uh, there's a lot of exciting things around the corner. So we could, we could expect some, some new music between, between now and then? Absolutely, yeah, without a doubt. Seth, it's been fantastic talking to you. So again, just to remind everyone, the Dear John event celebration at the Hard Rock Hotel, which is uh, just by Marble Arch in London. Yep. It's on the 9th of October. Yep. Um, come one, come all. And donate if you can. If you can make it, fantastic. It's going to be an incredible event. Um, if you can't make it, go to our website, blurredvisionmusic.com. Whatever you donate is going to help us in our effort to raise as much as we can for this incredible charity, War Child, and, and reach our goal and make it a really successful night. That's great. And yeah, the Cancel on the Rocks event as well, another great, yeah, great worthy cause at Bush Hall absolutely. in November. Yeah, it's and then be great. we've got. So many things to look forward to so in 2020, much. like Rambling Man. Yeah, so, absolutely. You're a busy man. It's exciting. It's been great talking to you. Thank, Thank you so much. Cheers. Cheers.